calling to order the municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and agenda setting meeting for September 9th, 2021. It's approximately 7 p.m. In a moment, I'm going to be asking us all to stand for a the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. And uh, I would ask everyone, this Saturday is the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. So I'd like to ask everyone to please uh, keep that in your mind as we go through this moment of silence this evening, uh, this tremendous loss of life on that day and in the subsequent 20 years since then, even leading up to what happened uh, in the Kabul airport a short time ago with our service members. So a tremendous loss of life. Uh, so please remember those individuals affected by us and, and affected by that event um, during our moment of silence. So if you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this Saturday, in remembrance of the terror attack on September 11th, the Monroeville Emergency Services, they plan to turn on their lights and their sirens on Saturday at 1028 AM. That's the, the time that the last tower fell as a display of remembrance for the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. So I just want everybody to know that, to not be alarmed on that, in that morning, but to take a moment to uh, remember those um, who were affected by that day, as we all were. And I just want to thank the, uh, the emergency staff and the fire chiefs for making that happen. I also want to have a special thanks for uh, one of our employees, Daniel Cole, in the Recreation Department, who came up with the idea of the, the, the sirens uh, going off at the moment the towers fell on Saturday. So special thanks to Danielle. So we are going to move over to our Citizens Night. If there's anyone that has signed in, now would be your time to address council. We always ask for a five-minute time limit uh, to, uh, for co public comments. We feel that's a good enough amount of time to get your point across and uh, keeps the meeting moving smoothly. So if, uh, if there is a sign-in sheet, if anyone has signed in yet. <coughs> Sir, if you just state your name for the record, please. My name is Robert Serafini. I am a resident of Monroeville. I have one question here tonight I'd like to ask. Is there any update on anything regarding the sub, the, the, I'm saying the Starbucks on Northern Pike? Has nothing been said or done? To my no. knowledge, nothing. No. No updates. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. Everybody get a shot. If you haven't had it already, please get one. Good evening, Dave English from the Library Board. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to come in tonight and remind everyone that September is Love Your Library Month. And while we appreciate all the financial support we receive year round, September provides a special opportunity for us. The Jack Buncher Foundation makes a pool of money available to all the participating Allegheny County libraries in a match for the funds that we raise during the month. So any of those funds that we bring in this month, it goes an extra long way. There are many ways that we can all participate. Uh, we can certainly participate by donating straight through the, the library's website, www.library.org. Also could stop in at the building and drop off a check. While you're there, you could uh, participate in our year-round book sale in the book nook. We're also uh, preparing for a drawing for a very beautiful UGG blanket. And if anyone would like to purchase a ticket for that, that would be available as well. And those donations will count. And between September 15th and September 22nd, the Friends of the Monroeville Public Library have collected some beautiful artwork, which you can stop in to bid on. So there are multiple opportunities to participate. And we appreciate everyone's uh, participation in that and their contributions. This year, we're working on trying to uh, put together a special uh, opportunity for those funds. 
Uh, as many of you remember, before the pandemic, we were working on Build the Backyard. That has morphed into Discovery Gardens of Monroeville, which is an opportunity for us to work with the Recreation and Parks Department, as well as other departments throughout the municipality. We've raised uh, the goal to 15,000 to add to what we already have collected. And this coming Monday in this room, actually, the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board during their regular meeting has invited the Library Board to come in and start to flush out some of that uh, project. So we're really looking forward to the opportunity to put some of those funds toward this. And we appreciate everyone's support. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Grady, Grady's next. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Lane, why don't you go ahead? Okay, sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just want to keep it in order there. Hi, I'm Len Young, resident of Monroeville. For, uh, let's see, 59 of my 64 years on this God blessed earth. A um, couple things for this evening. First of all, the recreation, Parks and Recreation Department used to send out that nifty brochure, I think uh, three or four times a year. And twice a year, as a professional landscaper, I would donate my time to have a uh, class to teach people about different aspects of landscaping so they can take care of their landscaping, keep it looking pretty. Uh, in the springtime, I have like a uh, refreshing your beds, how to plant plants properly, and that kind of thing. And in the fall, which is coming up soon, uh, I do what's called a prep and prune uh, event. So uh, what I do is I demonstrate different types of preparation. I found preparation. On the web. You did? I yeah, did. that's why. Well, well. That's actually where I'm, I'm getting to that. Yeah, there you go. Go. That was pretty neat. Yeah. It's very appropriate. Since the brochure doesn't come out anymore, uh, we have to go to the uh, municipal website, Parks and Recreation Department, and I haven't seen exactly how it's listed, but I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Uh, whoever does the website does a fabulous job of organizing the thing. It's easy to find what you're looking for. Very important these days. Uh, I believe it's October 24th, the class that I'm going to be having. Uh, it's nice to have a few people there. Usually we get maybe four or five people. But it's really nice because I tell you people how to prepare their beds for the winter. Um, there's certain times for planting things and pruning and uh, mm -hmm. even transplanting. You can actually transplant things in the winter time. It's a good time for transplanting things. So uh, lots of good stuff there. So go to the Parks and Recreation Department website, look for the fall prep and prune, I think Joanne calls it. And uh, I think Joanne and um, Paul are doing a great job with the Parks and Recreation. A little plug for them. Um, to add to my experience, I just yesterday attended a pest conference. And I have a pesticide applicator license, so I have to get these continuing education credits. So yesterday I went to the Chadwick in Wexford learned about a lot of things, but one thing is the spotted lanternfly. You may or may not have heard about this little pest. Mm -hmm. uh, Terrible. It's pretty nasty. It's sort of Kill cute them. looking, but uh, they're very invasive and they do attack uh, mostly fruit trees, orchards, vineyards, that kind of thing. So you really got to watch out for them. I won't get into the details, but if you want to look it up on the internet, lots of good information there, especially from the Penn State website, College of Agriculture. Uh, spotted lanternfly, look out for it, because that's it's up to people to spot this thing out in their you know, on their property. Um, another thing I always like to plug is the weekly bingo night down at the American Legion, Gold Star Post 820, bottom of Duff Road there, Saturday night, 7 p.m. You can be there. It's open to the public. Uh, it's a great time. A lot of good people there. Uh, of course, beverages available at the bar and uh, you just might win a little bit of money, but at least you'll have fun. Saturday night, what else are you going to do? You watch reruns of Johnny Carson or something? Yeah. So, uh, American Legion Post, Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Uh, one last thing, we've got an election coming up. The mail-in ballots will probably be coming out, I don't know, the end of the month, maybe October, whenever Allegheny County gets around to it. Uh, not a major election, but certainly a very important one, especially for the local scene here, school board, some council seats are available, and uh, if I could put a shameless plug in, please vote Len Young for Ward 3 on Election Day. For a public service announcement about the whole election, because you yeah. can't be campaigning at the podium, but you can yeah. certainly give a, uh, you know, let people know that the election is coming up. Sure. And you just did, so thank you. Look out for your ballot and let
Let's vote. Great. Thanks, okay. Len. You're welcome. Anyone else that has signed in this evening? Anyone that has not signed in that would like to address council on any municipal item at this point? Seeing that we're going to close that part of the meeting, we'll move over to our agenda setting meeting. We have one presentation this evening regarding the Dan Balsick Memorial Golf Outing. No, that's going to be Tuesday. Is that Tuesday? Tuesday. That'll be Tuesday. <laughs> Moving over to our executive session announcement that the council will conduct an executive session before tonight's Citizens Night meeting on September 9th from 615th to approximately 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the Tuesday, September 14th council meeting. Council, the minutes that you will be approving on Tuesday, Citizens Night meeting of August 5th, 2021, the council agenda setting meeting of August 5th, 2021, and the regular council meeting of August 10th, 2021. Any questions, comments? Additions or corrections? Seeing none. Council, the reports of the tax collections in front of you. Any comments or questions? None. Seeing none. List of bills and budget transfers. Any questions? Council. Very good. Payroll report. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we go to our next item. Our consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, should we have the roll call? We will. We do that on the regular council yeah. meeting. For citizens night, we do not have to. But the record can reflect that there is uh, all, all of council is in attendance right now. Consent agenda. Our new business. 21-6-ST Rashid Hassan Tennis Center LLC. Mr. Little. Yes, the applicant is requesting a site plan approval to construct a four court indoor tennis facility and associated site amenities. The property is located along Wingate Drive and, and identified as tax parcel 744A272 in the C2 business commercial zoning district. The planning commission has recommended uh, approval. Say your name for the record. My name is Ray Gusty from Farringham McCarty Gray. The applicant, uh, Rashid Hassan, is also here. If I can orient everyone to the drawing, if you can see it. Um, <clears throat> Wingate Drive is along the right-hand side of the drawing. Our proposed entrance will line up with uh, the entrance of Arden Courts, which is right here. Uh, Rocket Car Wash is above our site, located here. And what I call the back of the site, it, uh, is defined by Tech One Drive. Right Pull towards you, Ray. No, you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So the rocket car wash is located above our site. Nothing. Tech One Drive is located over here, which I, I'm calling the back of the site. We're proposing a, a 27,600 square foot building that will house four tennis courts. This small bump out area here includes the main entrance, uh, reception, offices, restrooms, and a, a viewing area. Uh, <clears throat> all utilities are available to the site from, from Wingate Drive. The site, it, for stormwater, the site is in a watershed area that has a 50% release rate. So we're, we actually have two underground detention systems. One is underground detention pipe located here at the main entrance. That'll collect runoff from the slope, the road, and the cul-de-sac. And the second underground detention system is an underground concrete vault located here, which will collect runoff from the roof, the parking lot, and, and the slope. We've added, at the request of municipal staff, we've added a cul-de-sac here uh, to better accommodate emergency vehicles. We also have uh, building elevations. So the building will be a, a gray metal panel. If anyone has any questions, I'll try and answer them. The building going to be similar to the, the sky zone, uh, similar to that, like with the sky zone? Well, is? yes. Okay. Is tennis the only thing that's going to be in there? Yes. This is the only use it's going to have? Yes. 
Is there going to be a concession? A small concession area. Probably more like uh, vending machines. <coughs> like vending machines, yeah. not like <coughs> hot food. Like. No. Okay. So they won't turn the tennis courts into pickleball courts or multi-use them or anything? No, I don't Basketball think so. or no, just no. tennis? Just tennis. Okay. How many people do you suspect? I didn't see much parking there. Right? Is the that was going to be my question. Below? No, it's, it's mainly uh, <coughs> drop-offs. People drop off for uh, lessons. It's more teaching. Oh, it's not to play games, it's to be taught? Yeah. Oh, it's a learning. Okay. It's not like a stadium. No, I, mis type of, huh. no. I misunderstood. I didn't see okay. that. Yeah, don't you see? Oh, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point to bring up. So this is more of, this is more of a training facility. Correct. It's not a spectator oh, right. facility. Okay. It's not for like me and three of my friends to go play a game of tennis. Well, you probably, maybe you could. No, it's, it's I'd have to learn, learn first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and send out and a new sign, the court sign fixed, up. Yeah, get my knee <laughs> fixed. But yeah, other than, okay. I, now yeah, it's I really more teaching. What okay. is the parking requirement? For it's three, three spaces per court. So we really only needed 12 spaces. We have 19. Oh, okay, good. Much more clear now. And planning commission approves, uh, recommends approval. Is there any concerns by the uh, building engineering department? Planning, nope, I'm no. they're saying no. Council, any other questions at this point? No. No, I think it'll be a nice addition. As you all know, that's my ward. So yeah, I think that's, uh, I'm glad they're coming in. And right now on the site is, there's nothing? Nothing, right. Correct. Right. Okay. And when they get approval, how long till they figure on getting started or? Well, the, uh, the, they actually have the still that's ready to be delivered. Uh, they're hoping to start. Right away? Right away. Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday morning. Good thing. Yeah. If we could, they would. Okay. <laughs> Council, any other questions? No. 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 So we'll consider this on. The, uh, Thank was, you. Was that site the old uh, Monroeville radio station? That's, that's down below it. Down below it. Okay. Down below. Anything else you want to add, or no, no. okay? Council will consider this on Tuesday the fourteenth. Okay, Great. thank you. Thank you. Sure. Next item for our uh, consent agenda of new business twenty one dash four dash C East Side Church of Christ. Mr. Little. Yeah, applicant is requesting conditional use approval to establish a church in an existing building pursuant to the Monroeville Zoning Ordinance number fourteen forty three as amended section four hundred one. In Table 201C, permitted use, conditional use, yard and area requirements. Property is located at 4314 Old William Penn Highway in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District and known as Tax Parcel 743B152. The Planning Commission has recommended approval and this is a public hearing due to it being a conditional use. So uh, anybody who would be giving testimony would have to be sworn in. Gentlemen, anybody yeah. else that, that wants to add testimony? Seeing none, gentlemen, if you could please right, raise your right hand. Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. yes. Very good. So this public hearing is open. So if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, Michael Damien with DCE Properties. Michael. Uh, Grady Huggins with the Eastside Church of Christ. Grady. <laughs> Tom, if you want to present your idea here. Yeah, can you? Yeah, I can start. Okay. Uh, my name is Grady Huggins. Uh, I'm an evangelist with the Eastside Church of Christ. Uh, I also have my fellow evangelist, Carl Ballard, here with me, as well as one of our members, um, Mike Delaquilla. Um, we're a group of about 40 members right now. We, we've been meeting for the last three years in uh, 4415 Old William Penn storefront there. We're outgrowing that space uh, a little bit, and um, so we're looking to move into this 4314 facility. I'm not um, to interrupt you, but could you tell us where those addresses are, because I don't know. Yeah. Um, the 4415 is uh, next to Fellini's Pizzeria, um, just a little bit farther down from the middle school. Okay. This is the old Ezor's. Okay, okay. Is, I, I know where the new one is. Yeah, the, the new, new, one, yeah. the new one is the old location. Ezor's right. at the bottom of Duffer. Yeah, and there's minimal renovations. We're just going to be uh, mainly tearing out some walls uh, to make an assembly space there. We'd be meeting uh, primarily on Sundays, and we ha currently have a midweek service on Tuesdays. So. Is this for the entire building? No. No, uh, approximately 3,500 square foot uh, space, you know. 
There's multiple tenants in the building. The total building's about 40, 42. You are thousand. talking about the plaza across from the dog stall. Is that right? No, the. Uh, the IRS. No, uh, the IRS? Oh, where the IRS? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was Bobby Penn Bobby office Bobby. building. I know where you Are you the first floor, second floor? Everybody first first floor. First floor. Okay. Council, any uh, questions at this point? And uh, once again, this went through the Planning Commission, which they recommended approval. Uh, any concerns from staff? Mr. Wheeler and Mr. Hugus? They're both signaligning no. I just had one question. So are, are then your tenants in the building? That's There's correct. Still somebody out the original owners still own it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Good counsel? Good. All right, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. That, so the public hearing is closed. Anything else you would like to add? So we'll, we'll, good luck. We'll, yeah, good luck. We will consider this on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. <laughs> Next item, 21-2-Z, Old Stone Commons. Mr. Little. Yeah, applicant is requesting to rezone 43.01 acre parcel of property, which is currently zoned C2. This is commercial R4 multifamily residential and S conservancy to R5 multifamily residential. Property is located behind the, the existing Giant Eagle and known as tax parcel 744F29, 744F41, 744F43, 744F51, 744F160, and 744F145. The Planning Commission recommends approval, and this is a public hearing due to a rezoning, and anybody testifying uh, will have to be sworn in. Good job, Mr. Little. <laughs> hey, before, before you continue, uh, that property is located adjacent to Giant Eagle, not behind it. I would say you're right, Mr. Williams. Yeah, if you are facing, if you are looking at the Giant Eagle, it'd be to the left. So it'll yeah. be, it is adjacent to it. Yes. So we can make that correction before <coughs> Tuesday. Uh, so, uh, gentlemen, if you could just introduce yourselves real quick. Let me get sworn in. Yes. Uh, uh, my name is Kevin McKeegan. I'm with the law firm of Meyer, Unkovic, and Scott. We're working with the applicant. And I'm Jim Holcomb with Millcraft Investments, re representing the property owner in this. And Ray, you're back Ray, again. I'm back okay, again. So. <laughs> Is there anybody else that wants to add testimony to this public hearing item that are, it's in the audience? And if you don't decide right now, you can do it at a later time. We can always swear you in. Okay, very good. So, gentlemen, please raise your right hand. If you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I, I do. do. Great. Thank you so much. So you already introduced yourselves. Thank you so much. If you want to just move on with your presentation. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the mayor, the council members, and particularly staff uh, here in Monroeville for helping us through this project. They've been uh, most helpful. So as uh, Mr. Little indicated, this is a um, rezoning request. Um, and I want to make sure the record is clear on this because it's gotten a little bit muddled um, uh, in terms of the application what's actually going on. Um, there are six parcels involved with this, six separate uh, block and lots. The biggest of those parcels is, um, um, and here's the first typo, it's actually 744R, not F, R145. Uh, and that parcel itself consists of about 43 acres. However, that parcel is split zoned right now. Uh, a significant portion of that parcel, which I'm indicating here, uh, is, uh, is uh, in the S conservancy zone. Uh, the balance of that parcel uh, which is in red uh, on this plan is in the C2 zoning district. We are not, I want to underline that word several times, we are not requesting any change to the portion of this property that is zoned S Conservancy. The only portion of that property that we're re requesting a change on uh, is the parcel that's in red uh, that is currently zoned C2. And that parcel number is? 744R, as in Robert, 145. And then the S Conservancy one you outlined, what's the parcel number on it? It, it, it is part of, that's, this is where the confusion comes in. It is part of 744R145. It's a parcel that's, that's split. How many zone, acres? So over, it's, it's an overlay. It's an over, yeah. How it, many acres of the 43 that you're talking about, would you say? Uh, to be rezoned? The, approximately 34. Okay, so then the balance would be the stay the S Conservancy. Exactly. So I think the easiest way to look at this. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Now, as I said, there are several other parcels involved. They are all... Um, located, if I can get my directions correctly here, 
uh, north to the north of the main parcel. Uh, they're indicated on this plan in a brown, a green, and a blue uh, coloration. Those there are, are two buildings there. Giant Eagle and Target. Yes, Giant Correct. Eagle is Giant Eagle is the the building to the um, <coughs> left as you're looking at it. Target is the building to the right. Okay. Uh, these parcels here, these uh, uh, parcels here, in brown, green, and blue, are to be rezoned. Okay, and they are they are part of the parcels that uh, were identified by Mr. Little. But I just want to make sure everybody understands that, that we are not requesting any rezoning uh, of this area that's already uh, S Conservancy. Thank you. So with that, um, let me just make some brief introductory comments about uh, zone changes in general. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Holcomb, who is going to go into a little bit more detail about what's going on here. So uh, as you know, um, zoning is supposed to advance the goals of the community supposed to be consistent with the uh, uh, municipality's comprehensive plan. When you're looking at a particular zoning classification, you're also supposed to take into account uh, the zoning classifications and uses of property uh, in the immediate vicinity of what's going on. So uh, this property, uh, although it's owned by the same people who developed the Giant Eagle and Target, although the, the greater portion of it uh, is available for commercial development, has really sat fallow for uh, upwards of 20 years at this point. Uh, without any interest uh, in any sort of commercial development. Um, you know, things, markets change, retail uses, you know, everybody is aware of all the problems there. So, uh, in casting about for a way to better use this property, um, uh, the owner has settled on an R5 classification under Monroeville's uh, zone <coughs> ordinance. Uh, now, that allows a variety of residential products, including one and two family homes garden apartments and apartments uh, in general. All those uses, we believe, are actually more consistent uh, with how land uses, uh, how other parcels have developed in that area uh, than would be uh, uh, smacking down another uh, large box retail uh, in this particular neighborhood. So uh, we think this proposal advances uh, the comprehensive plan goals by establishing buffers between commercial and residential areas and providing additional areas for a variety of housing types. I also want to point out that the proposal before you tonight represents a concerted effort between Old Stone Commons JV and the owners of uh, these uh, residential properties um, along uh, uh, Red, Oak, uh, Red Oak Drive um, for over a year, uh, Red Oak Court, thank you. For over a year, uh, we engaged in um, some fairly specific negotiations uh, with uh, those owners and their council. Uh, we did reach an agreement on sort of a private restrictive covenant, so to speak, that would overlay any zoning change. Uh, that agreement was recorded, uh, and a copy of it has been provided to the municipality. Nothing we're proposing here today is in any way inconsistent with that agreement. So uh, we believe we've, we've touched that base as well. Uh, as mentioned, the Planning Commission has recommended approval. Uh, and with that, I will be quiet and let Mr. Holcomb take it from there. Well, apparently you copied my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't want to be repetitive. Um, so I'm going to see if we can uh, describe this in a little bit more quickly. Um, so one of the key components of the agreement that we reached with the Red Oak Court folks. Speak up. Sorry about that. I'll move to the microphone. Actually, if you stay in the center, the microphone will oh, be up. No, all right. Speak of it. So sure. one of the key things uh, about the agreement we reached with the neighboring property owners was uh, one of privacy and height. Uh, so what we've done is come up with essentially a height map that this plan will follow that requires us to extend the existing sound wall that's along the drive lane into the uh, retail area along the rest of the property, not you know, to, to a limit to where the grade makes a difference. And to restrict our own height of our buildings on the site such that there's no privacy issue looking from, from place to place. So the closer we are to that wall and to Red Oak Court, the lower we will keep the buildings and then they will raise in height as permitted by zoning as we get further and further away. It's fairly well defined and, and very clear in the recorded agreement. Um, I, I think for the most part that's what's relevant to, to council here. Um, and, and so we you know, certainly want to follow that, and, and I, I will uh, leave it at that. Um, the other thing I guess I wanted to uh, touch base on is, is really that, um, 
you know, we included with our submission some sample plans, some examples. Those are not final designs, not even close to final designs, but uh, some concept of what we might want to do on the site, just, just so people can picture it better. Uh, the important thing to note from that is that there will be a proposed connection to Strohshine Road uh, and, and the parking lot to allow for you know, some disbursement of traffic. At that time, a traffic study would be done and follow, you know, but that would be during the land development approval process. Uh, and we think there's, there's good ways to lay this site out so that we can accomplish a variety of those uses and provide that connection. Thank you. And then you referred to, uh, you had some samples. Do you have any available to show? Once sure. again, we, you know, that, that's not, council will not be considering any site plan on Tuesday. We're just going to be talking about the rezoning. But if you actually have maybe some thoughts, that would be, I think would be helpful for council. So um, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, this plan is, is, again, just an example or a sample. You can see three dashed lines. One moment. Jared, if you could get the camera on. Thank you. So these dashed lines that I'm pointing to reflect the height zones that I described previously that from any house taking a cross section Can over the wall. Can you bearings? Like what's the, the road down there? Uh, the Ro Red Oak Court is here. And uh, this is Giant Eagle yeah. is here. And this is the parking lot that goes past the fence at okay, Giant one, I'm sorry. You need to slide it to the side. I don't think you can. The other way. There we go. Okay. And maybe better, yeah. forward a hair. There we go. Okay, good. That's good. Okay. Uh, so these are the residences along Red Oak Court. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Pitcairn Road, Strohshine Road, and the uh, Giant Eagle sits here. Um, so these height zones are really a reflection of what a cross-section straight line view would be from various locations in, in the neighborhood and from the rears of, of folks' homes down there. Uh, over the wall that we've agreed to construct is initially before we do development and uh, and create zones. So, you know, where approximately 25 foot in height would be possible, approximately 30 and 35 feet in height would be possible without creating any privacy and issues. The Reddit court residents are good with it? They are. That's there are a couple too. of them here who, yeah. if, if, if need be, you could ask. So, um, so that's, that's what we're reflecting here. And you can see then accordingly we've shown lower products inside that zone, perhaps townhomes, right, that would not would not rise to that level. And similarly, on the other side, as we get into the steeper areas where taller apartment buildings aren't as appropriate and large parking areas, we go to a lower townhome type product. And envision the large plateau that's very visible when you're in the parking lot right there would be where the taller products that are more apartment type would be. And also a connection road is, is reflected. And you can see our current concept does not include any homes fronting on that road. It's mainly just an access road, and we would try and keep for safety reasons. So that's proposed right now. I could get to that development two ways through the Giant Eagle main entrance or uh, off stretch on road eventually. And, and again, it's not as proposed, but as as we conceive it, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, and we have a little bit of work to do with the folks at Giant Eagle and Target to make sure that we reach whatever understandings and agreement we need to there. What is yeah. the tallest? Go ahead, Linda, go ahead. What is the tallest of the buildings that you're perceiving as possibly? Well, so I don't know what's permitted under the zoning, and I don't want to rule anything out. But what I would tell you is I would envision it as being four-story buildings. OK, that's what I'm looking for. There, there's a uh, drainage pipe running through that property now uh, down into the creek off of uh, uh, Pitcairn Road. Here? Is that going to be adequate to run your stormwater? Uh, I don't envision that. We have not done a study, but I would tell you that stormwater regulations have changed significantly enough from when that was built that I it will need to be enhanced. Probably answer that, yeah, Please. and also, too, <laughs> Ray, I appreciate the kind of comment you're going to give, but keep in mind, you know, we are getting ahead of ourselves as far as site plan. Right. But yes, this development would have to, if, if, it, if the rezoning does go through and we get to a site plan approval, Yes, the developer would have to comply with all of our current stormwater regulations, and if, if it would have to bring up the site to the current regulations. But if yeah, we actually well, we, we actually did the Giant Eagle and Target, and they're you know back in 
late like 96, 98, something like that. So there are actually two, two detention basins there now. And this, we, when we sized it, we not, not only did it include the giant eagle and target, we assumed this was zoned um, special use. You're now, planning, you're planning. So we, we included that, we assumed an L use and, and added that into these, but you're, you're correct. That's changed. The stormwater ordinance has changed over the years. So we would, once we get into it, we would size. We, if we had to make them bigger, we can do that. When do you when do you plan on having a final site plan for uh, to be considered? Um, difficult to say. We have, uh, like I mentioned, a couple of steps to go through in terms of uh, the existing tenants up there uh, to to work through and then and do some designs. And I imagine we'll do some significant studies and, and consider some options. So it may be six months or a year. In the early concepts, were there uh, single family homes considered? Uh, I, not by my company. Uh, I think that I have seen some sketches that other people have studied in the past. And once again, I'm even, I'm even getting ahead of myself. So, <laughs> Council, any? Well, I'd like to hear Mr. Mayor from any residents that are from Red Oak. He said there's a couple here, are there? I, 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 I would like to hear your version of what they just said. That's where I'm in, no. I will. Was this still a public hearing? Red Oak. Yeah. Sir, if I could swear you in right hand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And if you could just state your name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Norman Edelstein. I represent the Homeowners Association of Red Oak Court. Welcome. Uh, before I answer the question opposed, there has been some confusion for the last few weeks because there was an error in the original petition. Uh, the attorneys and developers have explained that they're not changing the area that's conservancy. The council proposed agenda next week has 43 acres. It's 34. So we did clear that up. Yeah, so but we the signs on the polls and so forth, there have been a million phone calls. So we just want to make certain when the vote is done, it's accurate. Okay. So it's thirty-four and so forth. Okay. Uh, approximately three years ago we were approached by Millcraft. And uh, if you go back twenty some years, thirty years, when homes were built on Red Oak Court, there were seventy seven acres of trees and it was supposed to have been all left forested conservancy over the years. There was a lot of controversy when the giant eagle target went in. And then they wanted to put a commercial development next to the giant eagle. And an agreement was reached 20 years ago, compatible with the owners at that time to allow them to do so. Well, that agreement was recorded, but the commercial development did not materialize. However, that agreement stayed in effect, and over the years, some people have looked at the property, but nothing occurred. And when Millcraft approached us, they wanted to change it to residential. And we worked with them for a long time, and you say, why a long time? Well, there's two issues. First, with a property of this size, they're not exactly certain what they're going to put in. And then when the pandemic came, the demographics have changed. So they can't look at the property and say, we we're going to put exactly this or that, because it depends on what will support it uh, economically for them. However, for the residents, we were able to work out with them uh, a couple issues. First, they're going to extend the sound wall. They're going to maintain the heights. And also, council needs to know that the R5 that you're going to vote on doesn't allow everything to be put there. There are a lot of things in R5 that are off the table, but what's important is they can put homes, they can put apartments, they can put townhouses. Uh, we think it's an honorable company, an honorable company, and uh, we've worked with them, and uh, the agreement's been recorded, and we're content that uh, uh, this will be a reasonable way to use the property from Monroeville. Any questions we can answer? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was very good. Thank you. Council, any other questions for the applicants this evening? Yeah, I have one question, and, and depending on, you know, where you put the road, and I'm sure you probably thought of this, I, I drove over there today, and where the road is depicted, and again, I know this isn't set in stone, if I'm coming out of there, I'm going behind Giant Eagle 
to exit uh, instead of in front of Giant Eagle. And I'm sure you're going to be probably talking to Giant Eagle about that. Now, they may want to close that off so nobody can go behind there except for their delivery trucks. And I mean, it's much more convenient to go behind Giant Eagle where the road is proposed, or at least the depiction there. Just a comment. Uh, understood, uh, and and we'll have to work through that. That's why we won't be here next week. Um, <laughs> but the uh, I, I think the the important thing is we're trying to create a separation from from the zones where people will be living and the zone where people will be traveling. Yeah. And Mayor, I have one other item. Oh, we have a, okay. we have a resident that if she could not be here. Uh, Ms. Jan Barbus, and she wanted her comments to be read into the record at the public hearing. Uh, sh this is Ms. Jan Bar Ms. Janice uh, Strohshine Barbus, and she says, thank you for sending a notice of a public hearing scheduled September 9th, 2021. I am unable to attend the meeting, but would like to voice my concerns of developing land so close to Strohshine Road where I live. I feel an exit from the property development to Strohshine Road is not feasible solution for an exit. I am here to remind you of the condition of Strohshine Road, the accidents, the landslides, the tree falling. I am suggesting you, you to survey this land and judge it yourself. I have lived in my house for my life 68 years. I am the only living original Strohshine on this road. I know this, I know this land and I see it falling. Please think and check the land that abuts all this development before it completely falls. Thank you for listening to me, Mr. Hugus. She's addressing this to Mr. Hugus. And I called you to discuss yesterday. I'm asking to keep me informed on the project. Sincerely, Janet Strohshine Barbus. And the copy that will be entered into the record Correct. for the public hearing. Council, any other questions for the applicants? No. Staff, any questions or concerns? Seeing none from them, uh, the applicants, any other, anything else you would like to add this evening? No, thank you. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Motion. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We'll consider this on Tuesday. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Council, moving over to our motions this evening, we have one. Mr. Little? Yeah, a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance to establish a stop sign on Cathedral Drive and Young Drive. Council tabled this motion at their August 10th, 2021 meeting. I understand there was a possible, there was a uh, study to be done along with uh, another one up at the um, um, park, up at University Park. Uh, Mr. Little, Can we, can we be... update on that? It should be the stop sign on Young Drive at Cathedral. You had still have it reversed. You're saying that should be Young, young should, Drive at Cathedral? The stop sign should be on Young Drive at the corner of Young and Cathedral. Okay. Not coming out of Cathedral. We'll make sure that's changed for the agenda on Tuesday. Oh, Mr. Hugus, would you like to discuss this? Absolutely. I have to get the right trip. So the municipality's traffic engineer was tasked to do an evaluation of the request. And in short, the um, stop sign does not meet the requirements of the traffic and engineering study. Um, as per their recommendations, uh, they do note in their, in their findings that uh, during the field review of Young Drive, HRG did notice that there's no stop sign for the minor street approaching of Cathedral. So HRG rem recommends placing a stop sign on Cathedral Drive as the approach to Young Drive. So the traffic and engineering study recommends a stop sign on Cathedral, but not on Young. Okay, so just to, so to be clear, and I guess this is actually probably something maybe Mr. Ratcher or staff. So as it's written here. It's correct. Right. It's correct. However, yes. we tabled it when it was written the other way. Is that true? No. 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 I don't no. Think. It, was it wasn't. No, I don't think. It was the same way. I think it, it was never this way. changed. Yeah. It was never changed. We, you it wanted to change. It was supposed to change. And we didn't well, change my, it. It turned out to work out okay. Or, my, yeah. my motion was to put the stop sign on Young at Cathedral. There's no traffic on Cathedral, so I don't know why that would warn a stop sign coming out of Cathedral. 
because it's a T intersection, you want to stop the people on Cathedral as it approaches Young. Well, the traffic and engineering study recommends you don't stop the traffic on Young. It which, doesn't meet the warrants. Which technically would be the right of way, if you want to call it that. It's 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 the main. Road. Yes. Well, right of way, in sense. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Council, any other questions for Mr. Hugus? No. no we thank can, you. We can consider this on Tuesday. Resolutions. We have two this evening. Mr. Little. First one is a resolution adopting the old William Penn Apartment Sewage Planning Module. More or less a housekeeping. Any questions from council on that or staff? Next item. Okay, this is a resolution we do each year under Act 205 of 1984, known as the Municipal Pension Plan Funding Standard Recovery Act, authorizing the 2022 minimum municipal obligation, or otherwise known as the MMO for the police and non-uniform pension plans. If council looks at the resolution for the non-uniform, there is, which will be budgeted for next year, $1,341,149 for the non-uniform pension plan. Uh, Mock and Hop, our actuary, does not have the number for us uh, yet. We hope to have that by Tuesday. This has to be, quote, presented to council before September 30th. Uh, any questions on that, council? Yep, next item. We're moving over to our ordinances, actually. So, Mr. Ratcher, this is you. It's an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing the proper officials of Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Refuse Collection Division of the Department of Public Works for the period of January 20th through December 2023. I would still recommend the council to table this. We're, we're not any further ahead. It has to do with the uh, representation, which I do think we've cleared that up today uh, of the uh, refuse, and uh, hopefully we'll have something for um, October. So procedurally, it's on the table now. It can just stay there. There's no action. Correct. Needed by council. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Ratcher. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville approving a grading easement for Sandy Hill Development LLC concerning property owned by the municipality of Monroeville located adjacent to Maple Crest Residential Development. What, what exactly is that about? I think maybe Mr. Uh, Wilden can, or Mr. Ugas can tell us more about this. There was a grading easement that was granted when the project was first approved. Uh, the, uh, the developer has since changed some things and they're just asking for some more space. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything. It's all wooded slope area. Uh, it's, it's, it's just vacant open property that's not used for anything. So uh, we don't have an issue with it. That's all I need. Very good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilton. And that's it for our ordinances. Uh, for comments, reports of our municipal staff, Mr. Ratcher, do you have anything this evening? I have one item, Mayor, um, and it was uh, it's on the council website. Uh, the Court of Common Pleas did upheld did uphold council's denial of the billboard over here on Monroeville Boulevard at the uh, Mighty Key Muffler. So the, uh, the 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 developer has 30 days to appeal that. If we get an appeal, it goes to the next level. If not, that's the end of it, unless something else comes in new. Very good. Questions, Council? That's all I have. That's good news. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Ratcher. Mr. Little. Yeah, I have two items. Uh, the first one is we have a recycling event at the Public Works on Saturday, Public Works on Star Drive on Saturday, October 2nd, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You're encouraged to register uh, for that event if you want to get rid of. Is that for hazardous waste? I can't, um, I, I assume that's for, is that for electronics? Paul, do you know? That's for electronics or just hazardous waste? Electronics, okay. Yeah, I didn't think, okay, just electronics. Okay. Second item is an item called the sign swatter. Um, we have meetings with the Turtle Creek Valley Cog, the uh, municipal managers and secretaries. Uh, we've been having them up at the park since the weather's been so nice, and an idea has been presented to uh, rid the Turtle Creek Valley Cog of all these signs that everybody sees on utility poles and even also signs that are in the rights of ways, yard signs as they are called, uh, and have one person dedicated to just doing that. Um, and I have a depiction on the uh, handout I've given the council. 
signs such as remodeling your house, we will sell your house in two days, and things of that nature. Just have one person at an X amount of hours per week, per day, and Amanda Settlemeyer has uh, figured out a cost that we could uh, start that because there's already a part-time code enforcement officer. Uh, this would make him a full-time if enough communities uh, would subscribe to it for approximately uh, $30 an hour, which would be about $240 a day, and have different communities, uh, Monroeville, Penn Hills, Pitcairn, Wilkins, whatever the case might be, that the science water would be in, it would be in their communities on their uh, prescribed days. And we're at the point right now where uh, the managers and secretaries are taking it to their respective elected bodies to see if there is an interest in something of subscribing to this uh, service. Mayor, I, I would definitely be in favor of being part of that. Mm -hmm. There are so many of those junk signs around yeah. the road on. Well, Does it have just, to be a code enforcement this. person, though? It, well, this would be the COGS code enforcement person. It would be their person. Yeah. This is in, their. In, in the past, I've had a, a number of those signs in Garden City, and uh, I've been able to call Mr. Yugas at a lot less than $240 a day. Well, the, the, the advantage. Somebody drive by and, and uh, take them down. But, but it's a good idea. It's just a matter of, uh, I don't know, uh, it's uh, kind of costly, I think. Well, how, how big is, maybe this is a better question. What does it cost us to have those taken down? Right. So, so, so in other words, if they drive by a sign, they just rip it down. Yes. Okay. Can you put a number on it? We can change the code. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. And it says in the uh, the the write up that it would be an estimated cost of thirty dollars per hour, which works out to be two hundred forty dollars a day, sure. with a minimum of eight hours per week. So that would mean that if Monroe wanted to do that, we would just say that we want somebody to do it eight hours a week. We, so we already have somebody doing it, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, it, I could tell you it's a never, ne never ending battle. Oh, I know that. You yeah. take them down, the weekend comes, they, they go back up. Yeah. I don't even know how severe. They, they have to have a ladder in the back of a truck to put oh, some of them up. Some of them are I mean, so we, high. we had to buy what we, we know is, is uh, drywall hooks from the fire service. They have them in the trunks of the cars yeah. so they could reach up and grab them and pull them down. You know, and, and a lot of times we'll take them down and we'll actually call or write the people a letter and says, you're not allowed to do this. You know, but it's it, it's always a new company, a new person. Well, that, that's really the, the we send question. A violation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. And, and we send them letters and says, "Look, you can't do this." And most of the times they quit, and then there's a new person that comes right. to town, and then. But we can't find but it's, them. Uh, they change their so phone number. You know they, you know, they, but do the code enforcement guys they fill up. find them? I mean, you know, when you hit someone's pockets, they'll. I agree, but you have to message. get to a point to a fine. Yeah, but those guys are doing other things. <laughs> they they put them they, up. <laughs> That's the advantage yes. of run. Right, yes. I mean, one day a week. Yes. I, mean, I mean, and part of the problem is so if you have those on Route 22 or Route, I mean, there's busy roads. You just don't stop your car in the middle of the road and try to pull something off the off the signpost. Right. Or, you know, it's pretty I mean, dangerous. That's really what and I want to ask, Paul. What's the what's the what's the, the, what's the scope of the problem? Are just ours. Right. I, I that's mean, what I'm trying to understand is how how but Tom talked about. He says in Garden City. Okay, maybe I see some along, you know, Haymaker and Saunders Station coming up. But how big? From an municipal standpoint, is the problem, and is it worthwhile that we it's need extra help? Right. That's I don't. I don't. I think that would be right. tough to qualify. I mean, because what we do is we separate the municipality into two zones, mm -hmm. one code enforcement officer per zone, and and they patrol that, right. and they remove signs on signs in yards or signs that are along the right of ways, the utility poles. But again, it's you know every weekend you, new signs go up, you take them back down. Um, so, I mean, to say that we're not doing it, I mean, we are doing it. It's just is it, it's would a battle. Would this be helpful given the scope of the problem as you guys see and it? It's and, it's work. and it's seasonal. Yeah, it's seasonal. You know, in the wintertime, you're not seeing them. You know, well, summertime, that's a point, you're yeah. seeing a lot. What's that? Tim, I mean, that I, I don't mind the one day a week, but what he's saying is wintertime. Well, you, you can subscribe as much as you want. It's just a minimum of eight hours. If you don't want to do it through December and March, we wouldn't do it. Oh, so you would say maybe then those four months you, right. we don't use them. Or could you do it once, once, one week per month? I mean, it's, it's flexible. Right. And, and the, and That's what I was thinking. One week per well, month. Yeah, that would be a question. Would, would they do the entire community for the week? 
Yeah, you could, you could, you could, what has to, for this to be feasible, you do have to get enough <coughs> communities to subscribe to support the cost. And if we don't, if we don't get it, we, we don't get it. And so those that are interested are going to their elected bodies because, as, Paul, as Ron just said, we have code enforcement officers, but they do other things. Right. This person would be dedicated to just sign swatting. Well, but can, can all the communities involved pitch in for that amount of money? Yeah, they, they will pay. They will pay. That's not strictly to us. No. Uh -uh. We will pay 240 for a day, though. No, that, that's just yeah. an estimated cost. Right. Make a change, 27, yeah. But we will pay whatever. that at least once a month. Right. But Tim, so you could do that, yeah. 40 bucks a month. The code enforcement, the enforcement officers that are driving around the community and they see the sign, they just take it down. So, so I don't understand why we would need a service like that because you have how many code enforcement officers? Two. Two. Okay, and they do a terrific job of it. I know in Garden City, I don't get any phone calls anymore about it because they're taking them down. So uh, I think it's a waste of money. But okay. That's why I'm presenting it to council. Yeah. To get it's your just opinion one opinion. On it. If you could use the help. Well, why don't we get opinions, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Yeah, we'll work through it. Okay. So I guess what some of the some I don't think we're trying to say here. You're just getting a consensus. No, I'm just getting a consensus on what, you know, on it sounds like you're trying to uh, find a, a full-time position for somebody. That's what it sounds like. I'm sorry? I, I said it sounds like they're trying to find a full-time full position. No, no, I'm the one who proposed it. Not you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim, uh, this is Tim's idea. Club. This is my idea. Well, it's, it's Turtle Creek. Don't take it personally, but, then. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> It's personal, but they'll take it personal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that ship sailed uh, several years ago, if not decades. <laughs> okay. It would be Paul. through the Turtle Creek Valley COG. Um, Here's an opinion. And the, uh, it's it would be flexible, but it's, at this point, it's really nothing's concrete because. No, no, no. It's just engaging an interest. That's I all. would like to hear more details, so I would say yeah. let's move forward I, I with, with right. fact as, finding. As far as like fact finding. And let's move forward. Should, I think we should, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's something I'm not going to help. You know. wasn't, wasn't yeah. More details, yeah. I just want to okay. know if it's warranted. Mr. Williams, will, did you have a comment? I do have a comment. I don't think it's warranted. I would think before we pay a service. One moment, Mr. Williams. Before we pay a service to do this, we've got to figure out how much per sign, and we got, what, six volunteer fire companies? And I would be inclined to have them take care of it, pay them. Not a enough people, not enough time. Yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah. joking. Yeah, there's no <laughs> way the fire department's yeah, going to do that. <laughs> I, I appreciate the offer, but you're looking for, you're, you're, you're looking at it as a fun, no fun, fun, fun the not there. I mean, okay. Bob, yeah. all right. Good luck. there just isn't the people. Uh, let's yeah. see what you So, what Tim, you it's, not, to it's not a no. Get back to us. It's not a no. That's the bad thing. Oh, that's not okay. quite a yes. But we're not ready to right. swat yet, you Tim. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that concludes my room. Okay. Ton of them. Thank you. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm sort of for it. Oh. Yeah, we'll all right. Uh, council, moving over to our, uh, well, the rest of our staff, actually. Uh, Mr. Hugus, you're already here. Do you have anything else you want to add, Mr. Hugus? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Why Rock, is that? Anything? I don't know. No, I don't Noth think. Nothing for this evening. Go to our council reports. We're, we're going to go. We'll just go in order of how we're sitting. Mr. Williams. Uh, I have nothing this evening. Mr. Arasinko. Just to let council and the public know that I will won't be at council meeting next Tuesday. I right, have right. some med. I have medical procedures I have to go through. Mr. Wolfram. Mr. Mayor, I have nothing this evening. Wilson. Mayor, I, I would like to recognize uh, <clears throat> the f uh, 340, 343 firefighters from uh, the Fire Department of New York and the 40 members of Flight 93, plus all the other victims of the terrorist attack uh, on September 11, 2001. We all know that uh, what we were doing that day and uh, it, uh, we can't let our guard down. We have to keep uh, vigil. And uh, the other thing I'd like to say is, please, everybody, think about getting vaccinated, and please wear your mask. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Harvey. Yes, just a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> Tuesday, I assume, uh, we will have the 
results of the Bruner Drive, Ruth Drive traffic study? Yes. Okay. So to the residents that are, were concerned about that, Tuesday we'll, we'll get the results on those and, and find out what we're doing. Um, the other thing is to uh, let council know the, the pumper sale is, uh, that we talked about last month is final, complete. It's been delivered to Wolf Creek Fire Department in Farmington, Missouri, and the money's been transferred to the municipality. Wow. So that, Good job. That is complete. And last but not least, pretty much the same thing that Mr. Wilson just said, but don't hesitate, please, uh, as you're paying respects to what happened, to stop uh, any of the public safety service people, fire, police, or EMS, and thank them for their job that they're doing. And don't forget to fly your flag at half mast now. Great. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Coach. Uh, two, just to, uh, two things. Uh, hey, evening. Sorry, thanks, Linda. In conjunction with what Tom and Ron were saying as well, I had a request from uh, the chief specifically, uh, police Doug, um, he's out of town right now, but uh, his, to think about his National Academy classmate, Tony Nathade, who also passed away then, he was from the Port Authority Police at that time, he was killed in the second tower uh, to do that. Um, and I also think about a, a gentleman I took training from a number of years ago. Uh, he was uh, gonna retire at the end of that September, Ray Downey, and uh, he was killed between the two towers when the first tower came down, uh, along with the fire chief. So I do think about them often, and since then I've actually met his son, uh, in addition to, um, to having trained with him many, many years ago uh, to do that. Then there's one other memorial piece that I wanted from the community. To, uh, can um, Jason, can you bring up that slide I sent you a little earlier? Jared. Jared, I'm oh, sorry, thanks. Sorry, Chair. Um, this week, uh, a guy that has a, also a tie back to the fire department for a lot of years, Rabbi Edelstein, um, from down the street from the fire station. Uh, the only other photo I had until Rabbi Simon got that for me was the one in our fire station where he's uh, pictured with the local priest as well, turning the ground over and breaking ground for us in 1964. Uh, and that's always started that relationship with him. Um, I graduated with his daughter and we were friends for many, many years and stuff too. And uh, you know, he was the first rabbi there at uh, Temple David, 1960 to 1995. And then he kept up the work. He was a, a professor at St. Vincent uh, College. And probably the reason for the Interfaith Ministerium today is because you know, he always reached out to everybody out also across the community. Uh, he was a good guy. Uh, again, he lived sort of catty corner from my parents' house too, so we've known them as well too. So he, he passed this week and they had uh, services for him the past week too. So thank you, Rabbi Edel. Um, Red will sign it. Thank you, Reverend Simon, for that information, too. So, folks to think of, and again, don't forget about on 9-11. You know, we've talked about it as well. I mean, it affected a lot of us. Uh, many of us here in Monroeville, too, Ron, we forgot to mention, we uh, participated in the Flight 93 um, recovery. I did, uh, a few other folks as well, that took place in that following week uh, in, in Somerset, too. So, that's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coach. This is Gators. Um, it's hard to follow what the gentlemen have all said prior to me, so um, I'll just leave it with the, what they said. Um, I would like to say what a wonderful job the uh, Jazz Festival was uh, this past weekend. It was perfect weather. The entertainment was amazing. They had thousands of people show up. Um, everything ran very smooth. Um, it was a wonderful event. Um, something if you didn't make this year, try to next year. Um, thanks to Public Works as well for um, the cleanup job um, that was done. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was a safe and enjoyable place to be with your family, friends. So I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, please remember for the donations for the library, September Library Month, as it was mentioned at the beginning in the meeting. And, um, you know, everything we can do to help them, uh, especially with this new project that's coming up. It's going to be a great venture, I think between the park and rec and the library board. I think it's gonna be uh, really gonna be nice for everyone involved. They'll be able to use that space for, um, you know, reading with children, um, a, a lot of programming. Oh, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be a, a real nice thing. Um, and that's really all I have. Oh, and thanks to Danielle for that great idea with the sirens and all of that at the time. Um, I think that was, that's another thing, props to her on that one. That's all Absolutely. I have, thank you. Thank you, a lot of bad influence in that. And yes, so uh, condolences to the Edelstein family and to the Temple David community. 
and uh, a lighter note for the Temple David, and actually our, our, all of our members of the Jewish community, a, a very happy new year. They just finished uh, Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. This is a, this month is uh, very busy in the, on the Jewish calendar, so a very, Lashana Tova, as they say, and happy new year to members of the Jewish faith. And as my colleague said, you know, we must never forget September 11th, 2,997 individuals, including 344 firemen, 70, 343. 343, uh, 72 police officers, and countless members, uh, you, know, res you know, citizens, families, and uh, certainly a lot was uh, lost that day and uh, in the subsequent 20 years of, uh, of war and conflict. So with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. Motion. motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you and good night.